tired of driving and waiting for a pizza. It's going to be cold by the time you get home. Tired of paying so much money on the pizza just to end up paying more on the delivery fee. But today I'm going to teach you an easy way to make a pizza and I have to deal with those problems. This recipe is so easy to make and so delicious that you can make it for your family and our friends. It's a fun activity to do on the weekend as well. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and preheat your oven to 425 degrees. Then you want to go ahead and lay out your ingredients out and utensils. For this recipe, we're going to use olive oil, sugar, yeast, salt, flour, and these next ingredients are going to be different and optional. Red sauce, pepperoni, and mozzarella cheese. So these ingredients can be picked up at your local store. I got mine at Walmart, and according to Walmart's website, these ingredients can go anywhere between $20 to $30, simply because some of these ingredients you'll have at home like the sugar, the salt, and maybe even olive oil or the flour. So it's fairly cheap. So after you have preheated your oven to 425 degrees, the next step is to go, ahead, to go ahead and start your yeast mixture. So what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and pour two cups of warm water into a bowl. You wanna go ahead and pour two tablespoons of yeast, two tablespoons of sugar, and mix for about two minutes. The reason why I use warm, warm water is because it allows the sugar to dissolve and it helps the yeast activate. So it's going to take about 10 minutes for the yeast to activate. So you want to, you want to go ahead and put it aside and start your next step, which is to start your flour. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and grab another bowl and put two, four cups of flour into your bowl. You want to go ahead and pour two tablespoons of salt and put that aside as well. Then you wanna go ahead and grab your olive oil and pour half a cup into the container and put that aside. So after the 10 minutes have gone by and your yeast has activated, this is what your yeast should look like. Should be foaming on top. So your yeast, activated yeast should look like this. If it doesn't, you wanna go ahead and leave it to the side and let it sit for a couple more minutes. So once your yeast has activated, you want to go ahead and grab it and pour it into your bowl with the flour and salt. And you want to go ahead and pour your olive oil as well. You want to go ahead and mix for about three to four minutes or until all the flour and the yeast mixture has gone together into a dough-like consistency. And this is what your dough should look like. So. Once your dough is already made, what you wanna do next is you wanna go ahead and cover it. So you can use plastic wrap or, or foil. I use foil because that's what I have at home. So foil works pretty well. The reason why you wanna cover it is because the, this next process is proofing and that's because of the yeast. So what proofing does, it allows the dough to expand, which is good for when you bake because it allows the dough to capture the air bubbles and not burst and have a flat dough. It's also good because uh, your crust, it's, if you don't let your, your dough prove, your crust won't uh, inflate and it won't be fluffy and it won't be good. So once, once you have let your dough prove for about an hour, this is what your dough should look like. It's nice and fluffy. It got a little bigger in size, which is good what you're looking for. And so that's, that's what your dough should look like when it, prove, when it pro proves. So this final step is your last step and it's rolling out your dough. So what you wanna do is you wanna hit it, cut your dough with your hand, just separate it like this and form a ball, just like this. And this is gonna depend on the quality of, of quantity of your pizzas. This recipe makes around two to four pizzas depending on the sizes, two large to four small. So it's just gonna depend on the quantity of the pizzas. So once you have uh, broken your dough apart and formed balls, it's gonna look like this. And now you're gonna go into rolling. You're gonna go ahead and roll. So what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and sprinkle some flour onto the surface where you're gonna be rolling out your dough and you wanna go ahead and put the dough down. You wanna go ahead and grab more flour and sprinkle flour on top. You wanna go ahead and pat it down into a circular shape, just like this. Grabbing your rolling pin, up and down motions. That's all you need to do, up and down motions. And this is gonna also depend on the size that you want. So if you want thick crust, don't roll it out too big. Thin crust, roll it out as big as you like. So this is about the size that I prefer my pizza. 
like this. So it's gonna be small. And this next step is optional. Like I said, these, these next ingredients are gonna be different for everyone. I'm a very simple guy, so I like pepperoni pizza. So my pizza is only gonna consist of red sauce, mozzarella, and pepperoni. That's all my pizza is gonna consist of. So now you wanna go ahead and pop it in the oven. And set a timer for about 15 minutes. At that point, you don't have to do absolutely nothing. The oven will cook the pizza for the 15 minutes. And after that, you can go ahead and clean up, hang out with your family, your kids, have a drink. You don't have to do absolutely nothing. The oven will do its job. So once those 15 minutes have gone by, your pizza will be ready and you can go ahead and cut it. And this is what your pizza should look like. It's a nice pepperoni, delicious pizza. It's quite easy, quite simple. You won't ever have to go to a pizza establishment to get buy a pizza and to waste more money on delivery fees. Like I said, it's a fun activity to do on the weekends. I recommend it and your family will love it.